championship of the world at stake. Round one, the bell sounds, and here we go. Wepner comes bouncing across the ring and looks as though he wants to be aggressive right away. Ali, known for slow starts, circling ever so patented to the left. He'll try and show his footwork early in the fight. Let's not forget one thing, Ali does not dance like this for seven or eight, nine rounds anymore. He puts on these displays. Wepner will look slow and awkward because he is slow and awkward, but he does deliver a pretty good blow. Another reminder in talking about what some call the Bayonne Bleeder. This fella hasn't been cut in two years since an operation over his eye. Ali showing tremendous footwork, but no punches thrown in the fight to this point. Ali is trying to psych his man, trying to make him look awkward at this point. Ali hanging on. He likes to hang on to his man and walk with him. Ali still hasn't thrown his first left jab of the fight yet. We're in round one, the World Heavyweight Championship at stake. Fight promoters around the world are here to see what they can do to perhaps bring around another big heavyweight championship fight. They're talking about the possibility of June. People like Mickey Duff in from London. Ali taunting his man, talking to him, protecting himself. Now he complains about a punch behind the head. Wepner, again, I remind you, has never been actually warned because of illegal punches, where Ali has a tendency to hang on behind the head, which is definitely illegal. So how do you figure? Ali covering up as Wepner tries to work. This is Ali's first punch, and it misses over the shoulder of Chuck Wepner. in the white trunks, of course, Wepner in red, white, and blue. As Ali with some roughhouse tactics of his own. Wepner tries to work to his body, comes back up to the head. Now Ali gives him some shots behind the head himself. Look at Ali going to the back of the head. Referee Tony Perez will have his hands full. Ali pulling some semi-clowning tactics, and now he's got some viciousness in his eye. Ali is trying to psych Wepner is what he's doing. Wepner hasn't hit him behind the head, except for punches that have missed that have tried to hit him in the face. Ali wants to fight inside, and now Ali has got to the referee, Tony Perez, who does finally do what Ali told him to do and warn Chuck Wepner. Ali pushes the forearm in the face of Wepner. Wepner looking for a shot. trying to punch inside, get that right hand in the face of Muhammad Ali. Ali continues to yell, trying to psych Wepner all the way, but Wepner will hear nothing of it. There's the bell ending round one. We'll go first to Red Fox. Red, let's hear what you have to say about the first round. Well, it was a very exciting round, and he did hit him a few times there back in the head, but he reacted. A lot of it is psych. Muhammad is the champion of that. He's magic. He loves, to, he, he loves to do it, Red. There's no question about it. And James, how about your first round uh, opinions? Well, my opinion is Ali's really just having a ball. Uh, I hope that, uh, that the luck don't go too far playing, but uh, he seemed to be having a ball and he seemed to have it well under control. Okay, we have a replay coming up here. And take a look and see who does the hitting behind the head here. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Tony Perez trying to separate. Now, the best of my knowledge, that was Muhammad Ali that was unholding the illegal yeah, shots. Yeah, that was illegal shots, definitely. Well, what else? You're about to lose that round on the illegal shots, too. Well, it depends on if they do penalize him for him uh, or not, is a big question. But uh, certainly, to goodness, uh, Muhammad Ali was no more the winner of that round than uh, Chuck Wepner was. Wepner no, is unmarked. Neither fighter has been down. Here we go, round two. Bob Sheridan along with Red Fox and James Brown in the ring. The champion of the world, Muhammad Ali, and the challenger, Chuck Wepner of Bale, New Jersey. Wepner is trying to work to the face of Ali, trying to set him up. Ali still hasn't thrown any combination punches, hasn't done a thing. Laying on the ropes a la Zaire, where he allowed George Foreman to punch himself up. Wepner is taking some good shots now, right to the midsection of Muhammad Ali. Ali will do this. He likes to let his sparring partners hit to his midsection. The man can't be hurt downstairs or along the side of the body. Wepner pulls back and says, come on, Ali, fight me. Ali still has only thrown one punch, and that one missed. That was in the first round. We're in round number two. Ali again goes to 
in the back of the head. Tony Perez looks at Ali, warns him. Ali yells right back at Perez. Perez is a good referee, and he won't be intimidated by Ali. He's no stranger to championship fights. the year, Chuck Whitman. Ali holding his fist right up by his head just to protect himself. And there's a real vicious right hand. Just grazed the chin of Wepner. Ali will be able to hit Wepner. Ali's got tremendous snap, tremendous hand speed. Ali has lost his foot speed. You'll see him occasionally towards the latter moments of the round. There's a good right hand that goes just off the left cheek of Chuck Wepner. Best punch in the fight to this point. Wepner is not to his front and able to get through to the head of Ali. Ali, a master at covering up. Ali can keep it in arm's distance. So far, we haven't seen that famous left jab of Ali. Ali standing in. This reminds me so much of Zaire. As Ali allowed George Foreman, then heavyweight champ, to come in and do exactly what Chuck Wepner is doing now. I remind you, Wepner has never been down. Wepner has never been off his feet. Ali landed a good combination of left and right hand through the face of Chuck Wepner. Ali roughhousing it around now. Round two. Chuck Wepner fighting for his life. Ali out there like if it was a tea party to him. There's a good, real good left side of the head of Chuck Wetner, thrown by Ali. Ali goes over the head now. Wetner continues to work downstairs, tries to get through with a left jab to the face. Good combination of punches. That's an under and over with a left jab follow-up for Ali, a three-punch combination. Ali now flicking that left hand in the face of Chuck Wetner. He invites Wetner in. Watch the hand speed, the difference in the speed of the hand of Ali and the slowness of Wetner. Wetner does not have good hand speed. Ali has tremendous hand speed. Just a wild, vicious right hand miss. Ali dropped a quick hook and then a quick straight jab to the face of Chuck Wetner. Okay, guys, now Red Fox, you can see what we're talking about. Ali yeah. does have the ability to get through. Oh, yeah, he's pushing his punch right through into Wetner's nose. Like, that time he almost swallowed his mouthpiece. <laughs> With such a jab, wow. That's I, it. That's uh, too much. I just, I get so excited. What a jab, yeah. More power in the right nose by the right hand. We've got some replays coming up here. Now watch Ali. Watch watch the jabs here. James, as we... There's one that just sends the face right back of Wepner. There's the right hand that spins the head around. Wepner desperately tries to fire back. Watch this left. Bang! Right on the button. Wepner doesn't stagger or anything. He's just knocked his head down. This guy's got an 18 and a half inch neck, which means the concussion factor oh, yeah. is very yeah. important. Yeah. Chuck Wepner now. To this point, Red, can you see over there? His face doesn't look marked to me. No, it's not marked at all. And uh, I just heard his manager, uh, Braverman, telling him, uh, Chuck to uh, stop trying to throw combinations, you know, and just try to get that right hand into his left kidney. Well, here we go with round three. Ali comes out again. A lot of the promoters like Chris Dundee and Erwin Schiff of New York City, Chris, of course, of Miami Beach, they, they think that this fight could be a better fight than uh, most people do. They know the business. But right now, Ali is beating, definitely beating Chuck Wepner to the punch. Same speed he had five years ago, but he's got plenty of speed for Chuck Wepner. All Wepner will be able to handle. Wepner taking shots in the face, and now if you notice, Wepner's gloves are beginning to drop down a little bit. He's not holding him up around the face, which Ali wanted to do, and now Ali is bouncing the left hand. That's about three in this round so far, right up the face of Chuck Wepner. Ali hitting him with ease. Ali is not allowing Wepner to come inside now. Ali has felt him out. He knows what he's doing. Now he goes back to the ropes. Forcing Wetner to look bad, forcing Wetner to miss. Ali knows exactly what he's doing. Yelling back in the corner now to Al Craverman and Patty Flood in the corner of Wetner. Wetner tries to get a shot off to the heart of Ali and it misses. Wetner being very awkward looking, but it's not all his fault. He is an awkward fighter. He'll admit that to you, but Ali makes a man look awkward. Chuck is trying to get through the head. Stop it. I could read uh, the lips of referee Tony Perez, and he said definitely stop it, Ali. Stop hitting behind the head. Wepner is not uh, at all shaken by this emotion. Wepner's a tough, tough cookie, and don't you forget it. It came to fight. Ali clearly has much more fluid motion, much more ability. It's clear that he's getting through with the jab. It's clear he won round number two. It's clear he's ahead in round three. We're midway through round three. This is a heavyweight champion.
championship fight slated for 15 rounds. And the big question is, can Ali knock out this man? Many people say no. The exhaustion factor, as it was in round eight, in Francis Zaire, could be the same difference. At this point, although Wetner's been hit a lot, he looks just as fresh as can be. He is red around the face from those jabs of Ali. There's a good combination. Another three, four punches to the face of Wetner. But Wetner not visibly shaken as he continues to come in. This man does not back up. Four punches landed that time. A four-punch combination by Ali. Starts off his left hand by movement to the left. Goes underneath with the right, comes back to the head with the left, and he followed up with the right that time. Wetner's not getting through with these punches. Now Ali pulls him in. Every time Wetner comes close to the back of the ear or the back of the head, Ali bounces him off the back of the head. There's the bell ending round three. Okay, we're going to have a replay coming up here. James, uh, let you take a look at it along with everybody else around the world. Watch Ali. Here's the first one, the right hand. Now, there's the left that lands right there. The right comes back, spins the head around. He felt that for sure. Now, watch this. Another left, light left, but it does spin the head around, so a glancing blow. But that one, again, a light, two light shots there towards the end. And the last two punches did spin his head, but I think he was kind of rolling with the punches a little bit. Red, Red as we take a look now at Ali, he looks like he's just out there for the tea party that he thinks he came to. It's hardly even breathing. You know, it's so calm. It's just unbelievable, that condition. One thing about Bob, one thing about uh, Chuck, he still can take a punch. I'd give him credit for that. The man, uh, Fred, again, you can still see, at us, uh, You can see that corner fine. It doesn't look like any marks in Wepner as we go to round four. Ali dances across the ring, almost tiptoes across the ring, trying to make a joke out of this, but this is not psyching Chuck Wepner. Wepner is ready for this. He told me he's been a competitor for 25 years in football and basketball in the Marine Corps, but none of that means anything when you're taking straight jabs like those last two off the gloves of Muhammad Ali. The flicking left jab, the, the accumulation of punches that can be deadly when they're thrown by the champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. Ali, again, is doing what he did in Zaire. He's allowing this big 6-foot, 5-inch, 225-pound giant to come in on him. But he covers himself so well that no damage is done to him at all. And now, all of a sudden, Perez, the referee, warns Wepner about hitting Ali from behind. Ali may have a few people psyched around here, but he doesn't have Wepner psyched. Wepner hanging on with the left hand and getting out some kidney shots with the right. Ali standing flat-footed. Ali with that light left can make a man look awkward when he goes to throw that right hand. Ali's hand speed looks tremendous because of the fact that Wepner is slow, slow with his hand. You can see him as Ali beat him with the left hand coming from Wepner. Ali beat him with a quick right hand. in his tracks. Sometimes it bounces his head, but visibly unshaken is Chuck Wepner. Wepner has tremendous confidence in himself, tremendous determination in his eyes. Ali hanging onto the head. This is his tactic. This is no mistake. This is not sloppy fighting. This is what Ali likes to do. He hangs on, and meanwhile, he protects himself. There's no place a man can hit him unless he can come in with an uppercut. We're supposed to see what they were calling the Ali Whopper, the bolo punch that made so famous. Now, Ali is complaining again to Perez. And again, Ali, as soon as he complains, goes over and starts hitting Wetner behind the head. Tony Perez this time warns Ali. Ali yells back. Is not going for some of the guff that uh, Ali would like him to take. Neither is Wepner. Ali is scoring with the left hand, beginning to build up points now. We're in round four. That right hand looked better than it was. It was a glancing blow across the chin of Ali, but no serious ramifications of that shot. Wepner, awkward, bull, moves in, misses the right hand. Ali misses his own left. Ali likes to pull a big man's head down, put the strain on the neck, and lean on him. Ali not looking tired at all. He's in better physical shape than what some of the pre-fight publicity would lead you to believe. There's a good right hand that spun the head around. The bell 
sound. Neither fighter, that was nothing dirty there at all, folks. That was, uh, neither fighter heard the bell. Red, you got something to say there about that? No, I'm all choked up. <laughs> You're all choked up, huh? Yes. What's choking you up, Red? Well, I mean, watch this guy take punches like that, you know, from Mohammed is, uh, you know, he can really take a good punch, you know, and he doesn't seem to be able to give back, you know, in truth, you know, uh, a real, you know, look, look at him, this is. Look, look at these shots here. There's a weapon his head getting bounced around. There's another shot there right in yeah. the air. And the right hand from underneath the arm, you got to be really strong to get a punch off like that. There's the wild hand. Ali misses that punch. That punch spun hit. the head around. When you see that, there's, there's some sort of concussion going around inside. As we look at uh, Wetner's face, red, I don't see it visibly marked, except for redness and puffiness a little bit. Well, it's not too much. You can't tell too much from that, because going into the first round, he had the same look in his eyes, that puffiness, you know. I think he's sticking a glove right in. Here we go, round five. James Brown, Red Fox, and Bob Sheridan here at ringside. Heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali, the challenger Chuck Wetner, male in New Jersey. Ali looking like he's stocking his man, he's backing up, holding that left hand down and half the right hand. In the first round in Kinshasa, Ali threw three right hands and snapped the head back to George Foreman and surprised him. Ali fighting with one hand now. Wetner is not psyched by this stuff, not visibly psyched at all. He comes in, he's a tough kid. He's taking punishment, yes, from that left hand of Ali. Ali is building points up. Ali is beating him to the punch. But Wetner is tough. He's a big man, a strong fella. His best punch, by the way, is his right hand, but he hasn't got it off real good yet. Ali definitely his best punch is that left jab that just accumulates punches over a period of rounds. Amazing speed with the left hand. He can deliver it from where it is right now, the hip. He may have missed that right hand so quickly. He snapped on the ear, the left ear of Chuck Wetner as Ali was backing up. Ali not taking the fight to Wetner. Wetner throwing those roundhouse punches and those haymakers, as they call them. This is a good place when you're out in this township out here right next to the barn. now hitting Wetner at will, making him look awkward, making his punches look ever so much slower. Ali now dances. He hasn't danced since the very opening second of the first round. Ali will do this to psych not only his opponents, but referees and judges. The fans love it, of course, to see Ali move like this. Beautiful left jab. Slipping punches. This makes him the master of the boxer that he is. Making Wetner look bad. Wetner throws booming punches, wild punches. But so far, no real damage done. We're in round number five. Neither fighter has been down. Wetner has never been down in his career. You can't say the same thing for Muhammad Ali. Ali giving Chuck Wetner a boxing lesson in round five. Lunging almost with his left. He comes right off his feet. Wetness continues to come in. Ali in that traditional, famous Ali style of circling to his left. And now it's becoming equally famous, leaning on ropes as Wetner takes his best shots to the ribcage of Muhammad Ali. There's the bell ending round five. That was probably the most action, uh, James Brown, that, that we've seen in the whole fight. Yeah, the cats had a quite an exchange of punches there. And uh, Ali's very sharp, but Chuck Webber's better. is still a very strong man. And anything can happen when a man has that much strength. Well, that's the big thing. And Red Fox, you've been around boxing a long time. And now that you're really involved with your own man, uh, Sanford, young Sanford there, uh, you have to say that uh, anything can happen when you get guys this size. Webner, of course, doesn't look like he's getting his punches off. No, he doesn't. I think he's bleeding inside the mouth, too. And that makes it uh, kind of bad. Well, right now, we, we can see what they're doing. They're kind of stuffing cotton up into the nose of Webner. They want to get that to stop bleeding just as soon as they can. This is not serious at all. Uh, he may have a little cut inside.
inside the mouth. This happens to almost every fighter in every fight. These things, folks, don't mean a darn thing. It, it's not even a factor in the fight. The most serious thing that can happen is if a fighter gets cut above the eye, because yeah, then right. the flesh can hang down. They have put uh, some goo above the eyes of Wepner, but uh, Bob, no I, problem. Believe it, I got a scar to show it. I used to bleed a lot myself. <laughs> Do you bleed when you sing? Oh, no, no. Okay. That's not a chance of singing. Here we go, round six. The heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali working against Chuck Wepner, giving him a boxing lesson through round five. We're in round six. Wepner game continues to come on. To this point, nothing really exciting to this point. But you get the feeling that anytime Ali wants to turn it on, he can do so. Fact remains, and I'll continue to remind you. Wepner has never been off his feet. That's not a bad record. He has been cut many times, over 200 stitches on his face, but only eight since that operation two and a half years ago. Ali doing what he does best now. You know what he's doing, folks? He's resting. You can see that. You don't need me to tell you. He's leaning up against the ropes and covering up. People in the Richfield, Ohio Coliseum are booing Ali, but you can't boo a man for something like this because Ali is doing what he does best. Cruises during some rounds. He'll put on a flurry before this time's over. Best punch of the fight thrown by Wetner in that particular time, but Ali had his gloves to catch most of the blood of it. Ali's hands are so quick and he can counter so fast that it makes it very difficult for the big, slow, lumbering, awkward Chuck Wetner. And I don't say that criticizing the man because I admire his courage. Ali has only thrown two combinations in the fight devastating series of punches. Ali just doing exactly what he did to George Foreman, allowing the big guy to come in. Trying to make him punch himself up. I think it's obvious to you exactly what Ali's doing. Ali is catching his breath right now. That's what we're working on Ali. Leaning up against the ropes. Sitting on the ropes, as Wepner continues to throw away the leather. That right hand again taken on the gloves of Ali. Wepner has not been able to hurt Ali in any manner at all. He's landed a couple of pretty good punches, trying to get through with an uppercut. Ali protects with the uppercut. He protects his midsection with his elbows, protects his head with his gloves. In such a manner that the only place that Wepner could actually hit him is right behind the ear or in a rabbit punch type of thing. And it is frustrating to a guy like Wepner, and he does it. Then Ali complains to the official and hits him back. Ali is doing nothing but resting. And you're going to see, and I'd say about four or five seconds here, maybe ten seconds, Ali break out with a flurry of punches because we're getting to the waning moments of round number six. And this is when Ali usually picks up the pace a little bit. Ali is famous for the last 30 seconds of his round because that's when he wins a lot of rounds. To this point, Wepner has won the round, but now here we go with a flurry. Is Ali with a closing flurry at the end of the round number six, and you'd almost have to score that an even round because Ali did nothing. Bob, it's um, it's really still an exciting fight. It's uh, the funny thing about a family man when he got a big punch. It's hard to tell which way it's going. It's really hard. Well, the, the Even though by points, Ali, if he could keep it up, he would still win. But uh, this man still have a big punch, and you can see he's holding it. I think the important thing to point out here is we look at them working on the Al Braverman, furiously working on uh, his fighter over there, is that Wepner is not cut. Ali, uh, on the other corner here, you see him, uh, uh, James, he's just uh, enjoying himself. He doesn't even look like he's breathing hard. Now he's off his stool. Yeah, I noticed uh, Chuck Wepner has, has uh, very little in the left hand, you know. Small hands as well. Uh, small hands too. Yeah. Yeah, that's what his hand is. Well, here we go. Round seven. Ali is out in front. Two rounds have been even the first round, and perhaps the sixth round were even rounds. Now Ali goes to work with the jab again in the face of Chuck Wepner. Flicking out that left hand as he's so famous for. Many 
people question whether this fight would go to the seventh round as we're in now. But a lot of people had enough doubt to wonder because guys like Dick Young, Milt Richmond, Will Grimsley, Dave Condon, Red Smith, Dave Anderson, Vic Siegel, Reggie Gutteridge is over here from England. They're all here because you never know who would have dreamed what would have happened by Kenny Norton to Muhammad Ali. A lot of people didn't dream Ali could beat George Foreman after what he did to Kenny Norton. Ali is coasting now. He knows he can hit his man at will, and he does. Two quick left hands in the face of Webner. Watch the right hand. Ali will set up. He'll jab with the left, and then he'll get off a three or four punch combination. He hasn't thrown a combination since back in about the fourth round. About this time, Ali likes to establish that he's in charge of the fight. Notice Ali with very little footwork, but tremendous slipping of the punches. He leaned back and dropped the right hand over the left hand of Wepner. Ali hanging on, pulls Wepner in, tries to make that 18 and a half inch neck of Wepner tired, so when his punches bounce off the head, the head will snap. It's Ali's tactics. The brilliant box. So this man was born to fight. Is a street brawler. Tough, tough kid. A lot of courage. And he continues to stalk Ali as Ali begins to bounce, continually circling to his left. Continually circling to his left. This is what Ali did in the old days. Every once in a while, he'd take that quick shuffle step back to the right and drop the right hand over the left shoulder. Watch him now. Again, Ali working on the neck. Three, Tony Perez has to beat Johnny on the spot for this man. Ali goes to the right hand again. Faints left, throws the right hand. Misses with the left jab. Wetner wild with the right hand. Over the... Ali misses two light lefts. That's something you wouldn't see in the old days. Now it looks like Wetner may possibly have a cut above the eye. I think I see some red stuff that might possibly be hair. No, Wetner is cut above the eye. It looks like a pretty good gash, too. He's got a good gash above his left eye. All right, this becomes a very important factor in the fight now. Red, see if you can see over there just what's going on in that corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a cut over the eye, and they're uh, applying some sort of uh, liquid, and undoubtedly it'll put some salve of some kind and draw it together. Well, they're going to try and keep this together, and uh, again, Wepner hasn't been seriously cut like this in the past two and a half years since he had that operation, but then again, in fighting guys like Randy Newman and Billy Newport and Ernie Terrell and Billy Williams and uh, Charlie Polite and Terry Hinkie, you're not talking about fighting the champion of the world, Muhammad Ali, who's got so much power with that left hand. Ali's not even sitting down. Oh, it don't seem that uh, uh, Ali's very tired at all. He's not tired at all, but Chuck is uh, beginning to get a little slower. And uh, like you say, Ali's definitely a legend because uh, he's so sharp until he even make any good fighter looks like he's awkward. That's very big, sharp, man. Very that's, sharp. It's a big thing, James. Very sharp. Here we go. Round number eight. This might just be the round. Round number eight. Bob Sheridan along with Red Fox and James Brown to bring you this heavyweight championship fight. Neither fighter has been down, but now we definitely know that Chuck Webner has a bad gash above his left eye. Ali at one time in the free fight said that he wouldn't work to the, the head of Chuck Wepner, but what kind of a fight would that be? Wepner's tough. Ali flicks out that left hand right on the eye. Again, the left hand right on the eye again. Now Ali has the confident look as he bounces around. He's looking for his shots. He's slipping back to his right now, and he's trying to get off to that left eye of Chuck Wepner. Now Wepner says, come on in. Wepner is not psyched out by Ali one bit. Unfortunately for him, he has got a cut. Don't underestimate the courage of Chuck Wepner. Don't underestimate the toughness of Chuck Wepner. Don't underestimate the speed and power and absolute tremendous boxing ability of Muhammad Ali. Ali dancing around now like he used to when he was a kid. He can't do this for 15 rounds anymore, but against a guy as slow as Wepner, he can do it anytime he wants. Big bouncing circles to the left. Ali now will take a quick break. All right. Evidently, there was some sort of a kick there, and Ali and Wepner made friends over that. Ali knows he's in command now, James. Very close and very respected man and very fantastic people. Wepner tries to command Ali doing exactly what he 
does best, bring the big guy's head down, put the pressure on his neck, tire the man out. We're in round eight. Neither fighter has been down. Wetner was cut in the seventh round. Pretty open gash. He's got excellent corner men. Whether they can keep it shut for the next several rounds is a big question now. Wetner wants to get in Ali and Tony Perez. Hang on for a minute. I'll let you at him. In he comes. Ali hanging on. Get off the ropes and end this thing. Wepner wants no part of even the thought of anybody ending this fight. That is trickling down by that eye. They've done a pretty good job on it because it really hasn't opened up too bad in round eight. Red Fox loves what he sees going on here. Definitely Muhammad Ali fan would have to see it. <laughs> Drew Bandini Brown, the clown of the corner of Muhammad Ali. As we watch Ali work to that eye. can you see there on that cut? You have a better view of well, it than I, I have. I believe that, uh, like you said, the seconds are doing a very good job in this corner, but I don't think, uh, I don't know. I, it's really kind of hard to see. It's a pretty bad cut it got there. It's a but bad. they seem to be keeping it under control. If they can continue to keep it under control, that's a big thing, but Red Fox... Uh, but Ali seem to be punching at him each time you get a chance. I know that you like to watch that corner of Ali, and I, I guess there's just no uh, question as we look at Wepner that the big factor now is definitely the uh, cut above the left eye of Chuck Wepner. Ali is in complete command boxing-wise. Yeah, how long, how long they'll let it go is, is uh, serious uh, business here now because with that cut over his eye, you know, and, and over a three-minute period, bleeding into it now. And it's going to be very difficult for him to see out of what that eye. The big problem is uh, the accumulation of punches, uh, James, that uh, you know from boxing a little bit yourself. Yep. Seems Ali, seems Ali don't know karate, but he sure knows the razor. That's it. He's got razor uh, slashing ability with that left hand, and he continues to work to the eye of Chuck Wepner in round number nine, the early moments. Neither fighter down, neither fighter really hurt, except for the fact that we do have that cut opened up over the eye of Chuck Wepner. It's right across his eyebrow. It was back a little bit further towards the corner. It could hang down in his eye and really close it up. His eye is puffy all around his eye, above and below it. But it's not shut yet. As long as it stays open, this fight will continue. And Ali will continue to give him a boxing lesson. Wepner comes in. Ali still has only thrown about three or four combinations in the entire fight. Wepner just can't get through the way Ali knows how to protect himself. And Ali will give him his ribs. Ali can take his best shots. Wepner has a glazed look in his eye like uh, he's beginning to tire and... Dragging his right foot behind him a little bit as Ali continues to bounce around a little bit. Faint both ways by Wetner, but nothing with the type of movement, the fluidity that Muhammad Ali would have when he does the same type of thing. Beginning to see the blood spurting across the eye of Chuck Wetner. Wetner turning his head away from Ali now when he puts that left in his face. It's the right hand that you're going to have to watch out for because when Ali unloads that on top of that cut, it'll split it wide open. We'll look for right hand momentarily. Wetner walks right into the left jab of Ali. Wetner not concerned with the left jab at all. He just takes the punch. Ali faints the top part of his body back and slips the punch to his left. Oh, a vicious shot to the rim.
watch this now. Muhammad Ali and Chuck Wetner. Watch Wetner with his right hand where he hits Ali, right by the heart. Just watch for the punch. There's the left hand that sends him back. Now watch this punch. Bang! And it caught Ali by total surprise. Watch it again. Watch it again. Bang! He catches him. Ali turned and caught him just by the ribcage right next to the heart. That can surprise the guy. You know, I saw that, but the only way I could get to him was by the playback. And even going right now, you know, very sharp. You can call it right off, right on the button. I can't see how you can do that. Hey, man, I think I'll stand with my minions, you know? You know, you really know this land. Well, I would have argued against that, you know? The playback, yes, the playback is what we need. Here we go, round number 10. Muhammad Ali will come out. You'll watch him go to work in this round now because he doesn't like the fact that he was set on the canvas. Ali will definitely go to work here. He's not happy with the fact and Angelo Dundee was absolutely screaming at him. We're in round 10. Ali was down in round 9. Ali will definitely pick up the pace now. He does not like the humiliation of being down on the canvas. Wetner put him down. Who would have believed that? Wetner is cut, though. Don't forget, back in the seventh round, Ali opened up a gash over the left eye of Chuck Wetner. The biggest surprise to this fight, two big surprises, that it's in the tenth round and that Muhammad Ali was down in the ninth round. of balance when Ali did go down. There's no question about it. Ali hitting Wetner pretty much at will, though, now. Ali is much more serious. You can see that determination in his eye. The determination you see when he's fighting somebody that he thinks he's got a problem with. Good right hand dropped right on that bad eye of Chuck Wetner by Ali. Ali is trying to end the thing. A vicious left that cut Wetner right on the button, staggering him to the side, but Wetner stays on his feet. Now Wetner hangs on the first time that I've actually seen Wetner go to hang with Ali. We're in the 10th round. Ali scoring with both hands to the face of Chuck Wetner. Good right hand, good combination of punches. Wetner is very, very tired now. He's a tired, tired human being, but he continues to come on to Ali. Does not have the bounce in his legs. His knees are gone, but Ali is scoring with the good lefts and rights. You can see that the knees are gone on Wetner right now. Wetner is game, but Ali is vicious with that left hand. And if he can drop that right like he just did that time, it's going to be a real tough thing for Wetner to do anything here. The story in the fight to this point, a surprise knockdown. Ali went down. Hit the canvas, both feet up in the ninth. But Ali has picked up the pace here in the tenth. Now we notice that left eye of Wetner is really turning into a serious mouse, as they call it. It's closing right up. A lot of people around the world didn't expect this fight to go beyond four, five, or six. Nobody expected Ali to hit the canvas in this fight. Everybody expected Wetner to get cut, and he is cut. So you never know in a championship fight. Ali is in complete command. He just slipped that time. It's a new canvas. They have got fairly heavy rosin on it, but Ali slipped just a little bit. Waning seconds now of round 10, and there is the bell ending round 10. Well, all right, let's see what corner we're going to go to here. And Go ahead, James. I'll let you talk about Muhammad Ali, who's uh, cornerman and not pleased with what he's done at this point. Well, Ali, I think, is very serious at this point. I believe that uh, the fight can't last much longer if it's, if it's Ali has anything to do with it because right at this point, Ali's a very serious man. It has become all business now. Now we'll switch and, over, uh, James, excuse me, we'll switch over now to Red and see what you can see on, on Chuck Wepner here. Well, he's standing in front there right now. He's still that eye that's giving him trouble. And uh, I think Mohammed has taken a little bit more serious stand because he's really trying to get it over with. Well, Ali is definitely serious. There's no question about it. Wepner is puffy, but uh, the yeah. cut they seem to have under pretty good control, Red, from what I can see. There's the 10-second ten, ten warning buzzer. We're going to round 11. That goes what I said, Bob. He's serious. Ali is serious as, a, as cancer and more direct as a heart attack at this point. You are exactly right there. James Brown, Red Fox, and Bob Sheridan here at ringside. In the ring, Muhammad Ali and Chuck Wepner. Ali down in the ninth round, but 
still clearly in command of this fight at this point. Ali is not tired. Weapon is tired. Ali has scored many more punches. A surprise knockdown in the ninth round so far has been the story. Ali hit the canvas. Ali has so much pride that something like this he doesn't like, and I'm surprised that he hasn't picked up the pace more. Because again, he's been warned by Angelo Dundee, his manager, his trainer over there in the corner, by Herbert Mohammed, his actual manager, not to fool around. Ali did toy, he did fool in the early rounds, he did throw combinations. And now we see a cut has just opened up in the corner of the right eye, so that means Wepner has cuts in both eyes now. Left eye is really puffy and closing up over and under as Ali puts that left hand right on the button, right on that left eye again. Ali, of course, in the white trunks. That's Wetner in the red, white, and blue facing you now, trying desperately. You can see the courage of this guy. He wants Ali so bad he can taste him, but he just doesn't have the ability to do with his hands what Ali does have the God-given ability to do with his own. as we see it coming up here, James. Ali loves to do this towards the tail end of the round because if it's a close round, he thinks he can win the round by doing this. Go ahead. I noticed that he, right at the tail end of the round, he really poured it on. It is. A good right hand there to the side of Wetner's cheek. Wetner desperately tries to get back. Does kind of get one behind the ear, but there's a shot up underneath the rib cage of, of Wetner and a good left hand there that spun the head around. All these punches keep Wetner off balance. Bob, like I said, uh, Ali is really serious as cancer at this point, but it's something else that kind of bothers me is the fact that Wetner is just won't go down. Wepner has never been down in his career. Yeah. Ali's been down in this fight. He was down the most famous knockdown against Joe Frazier in 1971. It's strange to point out we're in the month of March that Muhammad Ali lost two fights both in the month of March to Joe Frazier in 71 and Ken Norton in 73. I don't want to mislead you. He's not behind in this fight. And he's dead serious now in round 12. Scheduled for 15, the heavyweight championship of the world at stake. Muhammad Ali is out in front of the fight clearly, but he has been knocked down. People who make it their business to make odds would never have picked 12 or 13 rounds or even 11 or 12 rounds. We're in the 12th round, the early moments. Ali in command with his punches. Wepner very tough, hanging in there, cut over both eyes. Bad cut over the left eye, a slight gash by the right eye. Fox just found out that there is blood coming from the eye because it's splattered on his suit. They have the press dressed in red outfits around here to, I don't know if it means anything. Ali looked awkward that time. Wetner holds his arms up and says, go on, champ, is that the best you can do? Wetner is a tough kid. There's no doubt about it. I have tremendous respect for the courage of this man. Ali has no respect for his ability. There's a speck of 
blood on Ali's cheek, but I'm sure it's from Wetner. Ali likes to tie up the big man and walk with him to rest, but uh, Ali is very crisp, beating Wetner to the punch badly with both hands, right hand and left hand. Tony Perez has done an excellent job keeping this thing in command in the early rounds. Ali tried his roughhouse tactics. Wild right hand, no damage done by, by Wetner. Wetner continues to throw his roundhouse punches, has not scored in the face of Ali at all. Ali completely unmarked, doesn't even look tired, really. Wetner's a tired fellow, but a courageous fellow, taking the combinations of Ali. Ali really knows how to stay off the punches and on the ropes and tie a guy up. Oh, good left hand and a vicious right and a light left hand again in the face of Wetner. Ali's hand speed is the whole story here. The left jab continually in the face of Chuck Wetner. Ali faints to the right and then drops a quick light, lightning left to the eye again of Wetner. Wetner comes in and tries to throw that wild right that does go over the shoulder of Ali. Ali ties him up when he gets in close. The right eye is looking bad, but not bad enough to me to stop the fight yet. But all it will take is one right hand and Ali can split that thing wide open. Ali is trying to set up his right. There it is. He dropped the right hand over the left shoulder of Wetner. We're in the waning seconds now, around 12. I see it, but I don't believe it. The man is still on his feet. Ali's throwing everything at him. That can be thrown at a man. The man is still on his feet, getting a big round of applause from the people in the building. Because it's really a, 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 a fantastic fight at this point. The man has took an awful beating and is still on his feet. It's unbelievable. I can't believe it. What do you say about it, Bob? Well, all I can say is that uh, you can see the exhaustion on the face of uh, Chuck Wepner. The big story still is keeping those, keeping the, keeping those, uh, those uh, cuts closed. The guy has got tremendous. I mean, this is not a. a this is just not a normal uh, man. The guy is a brute. I can't believe watch this. Watch this replay now of Ali going to Wepner. There's that left that flicks in the eye. There's the right hand behind the ear. That's a damaging blow. It can be very telling. We're back live now. Ali off his stool. Angelo Dundee and Drew Bundini Brown and Gene Kilroy yelling instructions to him. He believed it would be this much of a fight. Ali toyed in the early, let's say, the first five or six rounds. He landed a few combinations. Perez warns both of them. Wepner continued to come on. Wepner continues to try and come back as the blood squirts around us here at ringside. Fred, you'll be all right. That won't hurt you. He can hit Wepner anytime he wants, any place he wants. Wepner cannot return the favor as much as he wants to. Tony Perez separates the two fighters. Ali bouncing around on the white trunks to the left of his screen. Wepner, red, white, and blue, flicks out the left but just doesn't hit the target. He tickets more punches to the head of Ali that don't land, but Ali just doesn't miss too often with his. There's the left again, right on that eye. Ali is just working the eye at Chuck Wepner. Wepner, courageous, continues to come on. Looks awkward. Ali ties him up. Ali, captain of the ship. Very well put by James Brown. Oh! Punch there. That caught Wepner off balance. It was a slight uppercut that staggered him around to his right that time and sent him up against the ropes, but Ali didn't follow up. Not like the Ali of old. Oh. Ali is continuing to hang on, continuing to conserve energy. I remember a fight a few years ago when Oscar Bonavena fought Ali, a very similar fight, and then dropped him in the 15th round. Oscar Bonavena fought the same courageous type of fight but couldn't deliver. Good left uppercut to the head that time, right in the face of Wepner. Again, the left uppercut. It's coming a feint that time that stopped Wepner in his tracks. Not the punch, the feint. Ali has all the movements. Wepner is sloppy looking, tired, awkward. Ali scoring with the left. Ali drops the right hand on him now. Again, the left, the right hand combination. Wepner just can 
continues to come in. Backs Ali up against the rope. We're in round 13. Now Wetner complains about Ali hitting him behind the head. Haven't seen anything dirty at all as far as I'm concerned. Going from Wetner. Ali now picks up the pace. There's a couple of other cuts in his with famous combinations of Ali. This last few seconds flurry is what he's famous for at the end of every round. In the winning moments of round 13. There's the bell ending round 13. And as I told you early in the fight, Ali will continue to do this. That clearly makes him the winner of that round because he picks up the pace and really drops the combinations that convince everybody that he's in complete command, which he is. Bob, I'm expecting a turnaround this time. I think at the beginning of this next round, I believe Ali's going to go for broke from the beginning of the round. He played it very well, very safe. And, uh, very scientific. Watch this now. Wepner kind of staggers. This is what Ali is famous for. Wepner is just sloppy, staggering all over the place as Ali uh, continues to put punches on him. Watch that. There's the uppercut, the right hand, and the left right back. Ali's hand speed is outstanding. You can see it there so clearly. Ali, Ali remind me of the days of Joe Lewis. Here we are now over Chuck Wepner's corner and Red Fox has been looking in there and can tell you that they've got those eyes very much under control for the size of the gash. Angelo Dundee and Drew Brown working on Ali. There's the ball. Bob, did you ever watch as Charles in his heyday? Yes, I did. Ali got that same kind of razor. Oh, there's a combination. You're right. Ali has picked up the pace here in round 14. A reminder, Ali has been down. Wepner has not been down. Ali in a surprise punch was flattened in the ninth round. But now Ali is definitely picking up the pace. Here he goes. He wants to end it. The knees are gone on Wetner. He's in definite trouble as Ali continues to drop those punches on that closing, ever so closing left eye of Chuck Wetner. Ali bounces the left hand off the face of Chuck Wetner. Wetner stands flat-footed as Ali takes his shot at will. He can drop it any time he wants. Watch out for the right-hand combination. Ali starts with a slip to the left. He'll drop the left hand under the rib cage and the right hand over the left shoulder of Chuck Wetner. You might see it in this round. He may drop it on that left eye of Wetner. Here they are, right above a video techniques point here in the Coliseum, Richfield, Ohio. Ali clearly ahead in the fight. We're in round 14. Muhammad Ali, Chuck Wetner, nobody but nobody said that this fight could go 15 rounds. It hasn't gone 15. We're in 14, and nobody believed it would be there either. Nobody believed Ali would go down. Ali has been down. Wetner has never been down in this fight or in his career. However, Wetner is struggling. Ali is using his resting tactics. Cut over the left eye is very puffy. A big gash. Not a lot of blood coming out. Much to the credit of Al Craverman, Patty Flood, people in the corner of very courageous Chuck Wetner. Tough kid. Tries to deliver a blow to back to the heart of Ali, but that time it didn't do the damage. Continues circling left, looking for his opportunity to drop that right hand in there. He'll do it off the left hook when he does it. Ali trying to keep him at punching distance now, which tells me that Ali wants to finish this thing right now. Wetner comes back to the front of his own, but Ali crosses with the right of his own and snaps the head again. And Wetner, Ali definitely wants to finish it here. They're telling him in his corner to go after him. Again, Wetner is not the man in the fight. He's staying in Trying to put the finishing touches to Chuck Wetner, but Wetner continues to come on. Muhammad Ali has been able to hit Chuck Wetner at will throughout the fight. He picked up the pace, and now Ali is resting up against the ropes again. It's beginning to look like this fight is going to go through 15 rounds. We're in the waning seconds now of round number 14, and Ali caught Wetner with a vicious left. Wetner missing punches. Ali scoring punches. Right hand of the year. A good combination of punches. Again, the flurry ending round 14. Wetner has gashes from both eyes. He's I, just, I just thought that Ali would serve him on a silver platter. But um, I get faith just turning around. And I'm pretty sure it won't go no further. 
thing about it, he went out from the, from the beginning of the round like I thought he would. Ali, he started taking care of business from the very you're, beginning. You're right. Watch this now, Red and James. will watch Ali scoring with that real good left hand that just catches uh, Wetner off balance. Wetner is so tired and so frustrated by the lack of ability to hit Ali, and then Ali comes right back with a right hand that just catches him so hard. That left did a lot of damage because it hit the eye, although it didn't look as vicious as the right hand. There's a left that really hurt, and a right that was right on top of the cut on the left eye. That punch would ordinarily drop any man. That's the punch that dropped George Foreman, a very tired George Foreman. But Chuck Wetner, very, very tough cookie. Round 15, a heavyweight championship of the world. People are on their feet at the Coliseum. They're seeing a better fight than they thought that they were going to see for their money. Muhammad Ali wants to knock this man out. Very, very Ali pick up the pace now. There's a real vicious left of the right hand. Ali has the killer instinct in his eye. He wants an outcome. He throws an outcome. Chuck Wetton refuses to get on. He relentlessly continues to come on as Ali stocks his man, sets him up with vicious left hooks and crosses with the right hand. Ali has hit him about ten times in this round already. Vicious left and very, very booming right hands. Ali is not famous for his booming right, but that left hand has cut the daylights out of Wetton. If he sets him up with a left, he'll drop Wetner with a right hand. Wetner's never been down. It's a tall task to ask of Ali now. Wetner is super tough. Ali has super ability. That's all there is to it. Ali wants a knockout. He wants to knock him out so bad. Real tough left shot to the body of Wetner. Trying to set him up. Ali is continuing to circle his left. He'll take a quick shuffle step back to his right knee. Goes after the knockout. And then he'll drop that right hand over the left shoulder. But this time, Wetner comes back with a glancing blow that looked like it spun the head of Muhammad Ali. But Ali rolls with his punches oh so well. Tremendous, tremendous fighter is Muhammad Ali. You can't say enough about the courage of Chuck Wetner. Ali ties him up on the ropes. Wetner continuing to throw punches. Wetner has the look of a beaten man. His knees are gone. His face is bruised. Ali is perfectly spotless. But Ali cannot drop this man. He'll try and catch him off balance if he can, and if he'll do it, he'll drop it. He hasn't been able to do it to this point. Ali knows he's in command. He knows he's in the lead. And again, Ali was knocked down in the ninth round. Since then, it's been no joking around for Muhammad Ali. He has tried to drop Wetner. There's a good combination. champion. Ali is laying down. Ali. Ali is down. Everybody is yelling, leave him alone. They're trying to get Muhammad Ali. The winner by a technical knockout in two minutes, 41 seconds of the 15th round. 241 of the 15th world round. Heavyweight champion, heavyweight champion Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. Ali. The people in attendance love it. 